our learner, the uh, improv actor, coder extraordinaire. Uh, this is Michael Fairchild. He's a sailor. Or a sailor. <laughs> Um, and we both work at uh, lead software engineers at AT&T Interactive, uh, really far away from here. Um, and we are working on a piece of software, a piece of open source software called Pool Party. So uh, that's a great idea. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think it's a open site. Yeah. It lets you message your friends. No oh, way. Yeah, and they can follow you. No way. Yeah. Oh, and you should totally like limit the character count. Yeah, like 139 characters. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I don't want any more. That'd be great. Okay. Well, uh, let's get started. All right. Sweet. Cool. Ah. So, uh, so first we have to write. It should be pretty easy. Maybe we'll write in RAM. What's not? Yeah, no way. No way. Uh, we got extension servers. Yeah, that's right. All right. And then, uh, we have to configure them, like, right. and SSH in. Yeah. yeah. And, like, install stuff. It's going to be popular, so we're going to need to scale them up. Yeah. Well, because we're like the day it opens, there's going to be like four billion hits. <laughs> probably. Yeah. More than, ten, more than ten. More than ten. Like it's other story. Yeah. 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 And then uh, we're going to reconfigure our. I think one thing changed. Like, do we want videos on the messages instead of like text? Yeah. Like 139 bit video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Totally. And then, then of course, when we don't want to spend money we don't have, we've got to move. Got to make sure we scale down. So. And then you gotta pay for it. This is a. Uh, That's a drag. I mean, the rest of it's kind of fun, except for like configuring. But anyway. Uh, whoa! A little too fast. Alright, so, uh, so would it be nice if we could just do that? Yeah, one file. If yeah, we could just have one file, define our infrastructure, check it into the version control, and run tests against it. That would be awesome. And write it in Ruby. Yeah. That, that's, uh, Something beautiful. That would be great. Yeah, so hey, you know what? Let's, let's, yeah. well, well, let's see what it would look like. Well, I think uh, maybe we define uh, our application. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Let's just start with the minimum class, because cloud computing is cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we should probably instantiate some servers. Yeah, we should yeah. make sure that we limit them to, like, we don't want too many, or paper too many, in case, like, there are 4 billion. And, yeah. But we also, we also don't want there to be zero. One. Ooh, there's at least one. Yes, indeed. And uh, we also should probably pick a remote base, uh, somewhere to run it, you know, yeah. slice host. Or ECT is probably a good example. I think uh, I've heard about that one. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we should go with that one. Okay, all, all right, right, let's do it. Yeah. Oh, uh, you know what? <coughs> we should keep it all in Ruby. Yeah, totally. Okay. <laughs> That's what we just said. Okay, um, let, let's so, uh, this is this is an example. All right, so. Uh, so now we'll talk to you guys. Uh, <laughs> oh, whoa, where'd you guys come from? <laughs> All right. um, so in this example, we're going to actually show you a little example. Um, we are going to put a file on our cloud. And by cloud, we mean a homogeneous set of resources. Right. So it doesn't matter how many instances you have. It's our view that a cloud is just a collection of resources that you can use um, with no difference in between. Yeah, and it's so. good to think about I mean, these uh, Services are all provided. The, the work unit is an instance, EC2 instance in our case. But the, the important thing with designing this is to think of uh, a cloud as just a set of services. It's got you know, HTTP, of course, AD, for AD, it's got uh, maybe XMPP, you know, whatever we want. But we don't want to think about, we don't want to be designing our servers on Ubuntu or we're going to be using Yum or Apt. Yeah, we want to have that. Yeah, that way. But I mean, as long as we can find it. And as long as it's, we, can, we make sure that you can hit any node and it'll have access to all of our resources within a cloud. So, uh, let's go. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, 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 All right, so, uh, so let's go. So let's write this application, let's configure our servers, let's scale them up, let's, let's let everyone in this room hit it real fast, and then, and then let it scale down when nobody's hitting it. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, that was so much nicer, doesn't it? <laughs> it's probably cool. That's right, this is our live coding uh, session. Well, I have an easy. So, it was small. Yeah. 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 Woo! Alright, so, so actually, uh, 
um, I did a cloud start already because it takes a little bit of a while to understand it and stuff. But I promise you it's there. I can show you it if you really want it after. But we want to reserve some space so we can show you that actually some other cool features of it. But yes, cloud start. Started on that. And, oh. and it did that. It took a screenshot so you can see it. Well, that's not true. I copied and pasted the text. <laughs> <laughs> so what does that do? Launches our servers, so it's going to make all uh, EC2 instantiate servers. We've already, uh, if you have the defaults for .ec2 directory that's got your keys there, it'll use those. You can specify your keys. Uh, you know, everything's configurable. We'll be trying to come up with a set of intelligent defaults. But this is going to go out in EC2 instantiate instances, and it's going to return with the IP address. It's going to bootstrap them so that we have all the software that we need, or the pool party needs to run on it. With Ruby gems, Ruby. Uh, it's going to update the servers. It's going to just do that basic bootstrapping that is you know, basically a uh, bash script. And, um, and then we also configure based off, or that will also configure based off your configuration mm -hmm. which. So another thing about the, uh, the bootstrap that's nice is that that will package up any local dependencies that you have on your machine, which is nice in case you change your gems, some of the gems, you can use your local gems. You don't have to just use the ones from GitHub, which can be uh, handy. That's true. So, so now, uh, now that our cloud has started, let's actually go look at it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so if you don't follow the pool party convention, you can do, you can uh, pass, I'll tell you what the pool party convention is in just a second, but you can pass a file, you can pass your cloud.rb file to every command line. Um, and we're, yes, okay. Um, but we're using the Ruby convention, or the pool party convention, which is um, keep your cloud.rb file in the subdirectory in the current working directory that you're calling these commands at, or you can set it as a, an environment variable. So you never have to actually remember where it's at. Or your dot pool party is the other default location. It, so it, it, it quote unquote intelligently searches your where, where we would expect that yeah. you put your clouds on every file. Um, so we can we can run. Oh, this is so, so small. There we go. So you can run a cloud list, and that will show you that. Small cloud. Mm -hmm. Alright. Uh, that's a duplicate. That's in case the uh, live internet didn't work. That's right. So then we can also SSH in. Oh, oh okay. Alright, so, uh, oh, ah. so, uh, so, uh, so let's cloud SSH in. Let's SSH in. <laughs> and now, um, so we're going to get into this in a little. So we're going to get into this in a little while, but um, full party, oh, full party um, is pretty much completely decentralized, uh, where we don't have a master server. Uh, we every server we we look at sorry instance we look at every instance or every node as the same, which is what we said at the top is the clouds are all logical, so you can connect to any of them, um, update your configuration on any of them, and they will broadcast it like virus out to the rest of them. I probably shouldn't say virus for that. Gossip, 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 yes. <laughs> yeah. well, that still has negative connotation. But anyway, a uh, local thing uh, I didn't show you is um, this is our cloud.rb file. Can you see it? This is the cloud.rb file in here. Um, the, we have a file in here called ntmotd. Uh, that's your message of the day for anyone who's ever logged into a server. Um, we, for this cloud, the only thing it's going to do is put up the chef cookbook, so we'll get to that in a minute, and it will change the message of the day. So when we log in, we'll see the new message of the day on any of the servers. And there you see it. That's right. And AMI? There. We're using the default AMI is the Ubuntu Elastic AMI uh, 8.1. What is it? That AMI is an Amazon machine image, which is the default machine image format for EC2. Oh, I didn't even start the timer. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, all right, so. So pool party, so we have some basic, uh, we have some basic resources on pool party, like you saw that has file in there, there's also has uh, directory, has text, so if you want to use, if you want to run anything that's, if you want to run a, a command execution on any of the servers, every time that you configure, you can, has host, and you, you, I mean, you get free. And there's a basic set, there's a basic set we've got here, but we decided in the beginning we were supporting a whole system to build uh, your server, but 
you know, that problem has already been solved, or actually maybe not solved, but it's, there's other people already working on that as their core thing, so. I'll that's a good example. Google uses it with all their desktop computers. Um, but another one, the, this is, uh, I'm really excited about this one that I already mentioned, is Chef. <laughs> Chef is the, uh, as you can read, the uh, state-based declarative configuration management engine. You can find recipes of how you want your server to look, and Chef makes it happen. So the nice thing, there's some reasons that we're, uh, public still supportive, but Chef is the new cool kid on the map because uh, it's all Ruby. It's, uh, it actually looks very similar to the pool party syntax. Yeah. So, so um, real quick, this is a Chef configuration file. Uh, Chef is outside the scope of this talk, so I'm not going to get into how this works, but this, um, this is what a basic Chef recipe looks like. And this is how you include it in pool party. You just create a Chef block and tell what recipe you want. Um, actually, I even want it. There's no has git repo. That's that's um, pool party syntax. So we can actually remove that from the slide entirely, which we'll do before we post. Uh, <laughs> but that's how it looks in in our clouds at our Wow, it's so small, and I know what to do it. And it's so cool. So cloud configure. So let's say you change. Let's say you change your uh, cloud. So let's say let's say you let's say you change your cloud. You, uh, we don't we no longer want to say welcome to new pool party instance. We want to say welcome to familiar. Save that. Then the way that oops, the way that you update it is by just typing cloud configure. What's really neat about that also is if you if you define a deployment in your, if you define a deployment in your cloud.rb file, every time you do cloud configure, it will update the resources and it'll, up, and it'll deploy your application, which is super nice, because a lot of times you can forget that you have other jump dependencies um, and you don't end up installing them. So this way, cloud configure just takes care of it. But full party doesn't, this is, it's, it's only an assumption if you want to use a Git repository in your cloud.rb file, um, so you don't have to, you can still use uh, Vlad or Capistrano or RC. We have our own uh, basic, basic uh, deployment bootstrapper, which we did. We uh, also have a Capistrano deployment, but it sort of started to feel like Capistrano was a little bit more than we needed. So we just wrote a really basic uh, SHN and commands for basic deployment. All right, so that's what cost configure will look like. We'll switch back over in a little while so we can keep going to think we're good. Yeah. Um, so, so cloud configure client and local, which basically means unchange and multiply by itself, or in simpler words, uh, run it a bunch and it won't change things unless it needs to. Which means that we can cloud configure, and then cloud configure, and then cloud configure, and uh, cloud configure. it's all, all happening. So, so um, I have just a basic Rails deployment. I just want to throw a Rails or a Sinatra or a way. <laughs> How do I do that? Like, I don't want to have to go write all that. Which is a big reason why we switched over to uh, um, using Chef, so that we can support all these cookbooks. So this is the Ops Code repository. And that's like half, that's like, like a quarter of a page of the recipes that are available. I think there's 55 up there, if, you know, we didn't cut it off. So, and then 37 Signals has a repository full of some recipes, and uh, uh, Retro has a, a, a has passenger. Uh, and holy crap, oh my god, you know what I just heard? Twitter clone got talked about on Oprah. Oh crap. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> we, better, uh, we better know how to expand. Yeah, yeah. so how do we do that? Uh, well, actually, it's right here. Oh, no way. Yeah. <laughs> just, uh, just expand when load greater than 0.8. I think that would be a nice way to say it. Yeah, that's not bad. And contract when the load is small. Yeah, it's so, okay. What we've got the, Oh. These metrics, these, well, the next slide says, these metrics are not just per instance, but these are averaged across the cloud. Because if you just have one that's uh, real busy, you don't want to cloud to expand and yeah. take more instances. For sure. The other problem that, uh, with the cloud, on the note about uh, resource usage, is that if you built a large Rails app or any kind of app, uh, the, the resource usage is different for different resources. So the Rails site, 
might be the rails, long rails might be just cruising along, but your database is getting pummeled because. But there's a solution to that. What's that? <laughs> uh, how about multiple clouds? Awesome. We'll put our database server in one cloud. Definitely. And our application server on another. So that way we can expand our database cloud and we can keep our application cloud small. And we can use different metrics because perhaps our database cloud starts to choke and the memory goes low, but our application server is more important, more based on load. That's right. Um, well, one important thing to look at also when we're talking about instances or nodes, those can be anything. Um, we, we have core support for EC2 right now. Uh, we'll actually, wait, we'll, there's slides on that, so we'll get to that. But anyway, we have multiple clouds, and we'll expand them differently. And you can set, obviously, if you want to do a deployment in, in here, you can set those deployments in here if you want, or use Or whatever. So a basic cloud looks like that. Just the, the point being here that you like uh, any good framework, you don't want to have to make a bunch of uh, choices. So we, these are the defaults. Uh, two to five instances using EC2. The AMI actually wouldn't be that. It would be an instance ID, but that's more descriptive. <laughs> and, uh, oh, I bet. And uh, contract the load is less than 0.65, load is greater than 1.9. So these are just uh, some basic defaults. There's a lot, a list of other defaults that are more detailed, but in a, in a class default. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what is the range on the Uh, it's uptime. Oh, yeah. It's uptime. Ah. It's uptime. <laughs> 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 my fingers going crazy over right here. Uh, it's just it's uptime. If you remember on the uptime command, you'll see um, it's just based on the load. Um, I don't know the exact the exact number of charges or something mm -hmm. does, but it's just based on what's that? Wait. Yeah, it's the number of threads waiting on the like, current CPU, etc. There's a man page. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So as we said before, uh, pool party is decentralized. So any instance, all the instances themselves are act as a quote unquote master, and all the instances themselves act as a quote unquote slave, which is actually kind of cool to think about it. Yeah, that will work. Okay. So pool party doesn't make, as we were saying before, pool party doesn't make any application assumptions. Okay. Cloud um, architecture. That's right, which actually is the next slide. Um, <laughs> uh, so you can, you can deploy anything on using pool party. So if I have a PHP site and I want to put it up in the, in the cloud, you can use pool party to do that. It's just written in Ruby because Ruby is beautiful. Or maybe you have a part of the simulation cluster cloud if you want for some reason. <laughs> you know, the point being that it doesn't have to just be, it could be a cloud, it could be anything. You might have a, a Common case would be you have a video sharing site, and so you need your web front end, but then on the back side you need another cloud for your parents coding. And then maybe you need a, another cloud that's going to be your email blast to update your friends to you know, post a new video. So the whole point here is to start with a, just one cloud. You can start with one cloud, put everything in there, but then you can start to break out in the comments. So um, that's kind of a plan. I hope everyone gets it. Yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what's in store for the future with pool party? The first one, more remote bases. So right now, uh, we've really just been supporting EC2, and the plan is is to add uh, the VMware. We actually have one in a branch that's almost done that supports VM run. So if you have VMware on the Mac, there's a command line VM run. You can instantiate some servers and run them. So the idea is, is uh, it'll be a lot cheaper, it's easier to just instantiate some servers on your laptop and build a cloud on your laptop. Maybe a, a droplet. So how can you have your own? You say you have your own boxes at home, and like everyone. I have like six servers somewhere, I'm sure. <laughs> like I, every once in a while I get a credit card statement from Slice Host, and I'm like, oh yeah, I have a Slice Host. <laughs> like I want to use those. So you can add your own. It's super easy. There's only four methods you have to implement to add a load of this. And these, uh, lots of instances just needs to return an ID at least. Uh, you can return a hash or a lot more than that, but we just need to be able to launch an instance and then describe an instance with that idea. The key thing you need to get back is the IP in some way to access it. Uh, dealing with the SSH keys and all that is going to be dependent on, mm -hmm. that's not part of pool party for your other motor bases. I mean, with EC2, it takes care of that, and pool party supports that. But on your VMware instances, for instance, you'll have to have this set up. Um, so one thing that we're also, we're, we have in another branch is scripted automated deployment, or 
automated scripted deployment testing. So if you do have VMware, this is a great this is a great place to use it if you want to use pool party with VMware. Uh, put it on another box, um, do some do some changes to your configuration, say go, and then it'll you can see it on the screen with VMware what it's doing. They did VMware we can actually uh, we have the framework spec, but it would be nice to actually have more uh, actually launch the cloud and then end that bit and make sure those ports are up. Would be the basic. So um, another thing that Pool Party has been doing, we've been working pretty hard in the past couple of weeks doing uh, uh, pretty much we've kind of sweeping up the core. Uh, there's yeah, so we've been sweeping up the core. Anyway, one of the things that's come out of that is we've been modularizing Pool Party quite a bit. So if anyone's been a user at GitHub, you'll see there's like 50 gems over there and um, probably like 50 more in the next couple of weeks. Um, so there's tons, of, there's tons of component types, just like, uh, just like Sinatra is doing. Um, thanks, Blake. Uh, just so like Sinatra is doing, we're taking, we're taking core functionality and placing a gem so that you can use them outside of Pool Party, um, and also so that uh, when we continue to update, say, the DSL, we don't have to go into Pool Party and update that, and all that stuff is taken care of with gems. The latest gem that's coming in is a uh, butterfly. Oh, uh, so cool. <laughs> it's a rack app. It's a rack app. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah, you can. Basic, basically, we're using HTTP for internet communication. Something similar, uh, something Dan was talking about earlier today. We, we're not looking at HTTP as something for the browser. We look at it as a very solid protocol that we can use and jump on top of uh, for our internet communication. That's, actually, that's what butterfly does. So if you go to GitHub and you look at butterfly, that really cool description really just means um, pass information over HTTP. And a, a nice thing about it is that we have a description, a cloud.json file, where we're storing uh, the state, we're updating that with our load and the cloud information. So it's, we just want to be able to do an HTTP request for that and get the data. So Butterfly is kind of nice because you can just do an HTTP request to a URL and it'll just pull the data out of the JSON. So if you go slash load, it'll go to the JSON file and find the load element and just send that back. It's super basic, but a lot of times that's all you need. You have some, or it could be an object. You can just have a class that has an object and it'll, it'll call that method and turn whatever that method is. So, so for the key of you, you notice I just switched, slipped the slide, we'll go back in just a second because I think these two are a little out of order. So um, uh, the nodes themselves, will be they update their own state and they push out their state to the rest of the file. So at any given time, your instances will know relatively the current state of the entire cloud, um, which is much, it's, um, it's more efficient than doing pull, so anytime that it needs it, they would pull and request. Um, so we're, that's, what that, that's, that's what that slide means, and what that description means. <laughs> uh, another thing we're trying to do go forward, discussing earlier, is a tighter integration with DNS. Uh, instead of using half proxy to balance within the cloud, but you can, you can, you can make a, you can make up a proxy cloud if you do want to use proxy or smarter or nginx uh, proxy. You can make, you can write a cloud that will handle that proxy for you if you need it to be smarter. Right. Um, but we feel that DNS is a great example of peer to peer. is a very, is a great peer to peer network, and it's been around for a hell of a long time. Um, so that's what, so that's how our nodes, nodes inside of Pool Party know about each other. And the goal, the goal is to have it where. When you launch a uh, cloud, there'll be some recipes to take care of the DNS automatically, so you'll automatically get load down some short time to live, and then just do the, use the web infrastructure that already exists for your basic load balancing. And then when you need it, you can <coughs> talk to your internet load balancing. Um, so alternatives? Yeah, not necessarily alternatives. A lot of these things are not either or, but uh, together. So for instance, Heroku is a great app to use uh, platform to just deploy your Sinatra app through really quick. But maybe you have a transcoding site, and they're not going to really give you as much power as you need for transcoding your your Twitter from videos. So you know you might want to launch for that, and you can still launch your cloud with Pool Party, your transcoding cloud. And actually, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Heroku is hosted in EC2, so you should have a pretty good connection there and free bandwidth between the two, which is nice. So that's a uh, that's right, and and also you can use um, one nice thing. Is that if you make say multiple clouds and you have a, de or a development cloud, um, and you can use Pool Party to make your development cloud, and then when you're ready, you can push. You can use your, that development cloud to test and see what's what's working, what's not working. Then you can easily cloud terminate. That's the next one. 
Yeah, you can easily cloud terminate. Um, and then that just pushes Heroku or push the right scale up or um, push to them both at the same time. And with RightScale also, I mean, I use RightScale, and so I still get emails from RightScale when I launch an instance. So you can, it's not an either or proposition with RightScale. Yeah. That? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, so more resources. We, um, we are both generally in the IRC channel on Freenode. It's called Pool Party RV uh, because poolparty.com was leaking. So. Uh, poolpartyrb.com. Also, if you want some more resources, which is now uh, the Pool Party RB has been relaunched. Um, it's got a nice new. Uh, and those are our emails. These slides will be posted. And uh, we also want to give a, a, a thanks to everybody here, but also thanks to ATT and ATT Interactive for supporting us and, and Waves. Developing us. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys, you guys, and you guys, of course. Oh, the cool car sitting right behind us. <laughs> it's so cool. Any, anyway, I'm sorry, I got distracted. Any questions? Yeah. Okay, so I've got VMware mounted on my back here. <coughs> He's saying basically you have an app where I could do a practice deploy of my VMware. Uh, yes. Cloud, and uh, it would be working there, and then when I've got it working there, then I can just flip the switch to EC2 and is that your yeah, so I'm going to repeat the question for, uh, if I'm hearing you right, you're saying, can I build a cloud on my laptop with VMware and then change that using from VMware to EC2 and then run cloud start again and they'll start at EC2? Yes. And the answer is yes, almost, because like we said, that branch for VMware is uh, not in the official gem yet, but uh, that's that's the way it's going to work, yes. You'll just be able to change that using file, and you'll be in EC2 instead. You could, or you can just do this. Support for software, you know, like Ruby and Correct. libraries. And so if we start, we don't have a custom, like some of the, uh, the projects use a custom AMI that already has um, everything installed and dialed in. But we just start with a base Ubuntu AMI, and it, we're not tied to Ubuntu either. Although I would recommend using Ubuntu because that's what we use to test with, so that's the best support. It. But um, you can just boot with any Linux distro, and we're going to take old Yum or AppGet based distro, and uh, we'll take care of installing Ruby and Ruby Gems, and we'll install Chef or Puppet, and configure Passenger, whatever recipes that, that already exist, or that you've written. Yeah. Oh, you can. I just wanted, just wanted to. To show this. Um, you could also just deploy to your cloud, your development cloud, and not update your production cloud. And then when you're ready, just just use just use.
or like maybe deploying to a cell phone um, in your cloud to, to handle um, different loads. Uh, we actually have a roadmap up on our ticket, on our uh, Lighthouse. Pool Party Lighthouse app.com. Oh, wait, Pool Party RV. The lighthouse app .com. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah. Um, so you can check that out. And then what sort of response to the community like? Um, good? Uh, yeah, it's been great. Especially the uh, the chef guys have been helping out a little bit lately. Talk to them. Let's have you fully broken to help out too. That would be great. Yeah. Uh, any more questions?